on God. <laughs> oh God, this is an actual knife. This should be obvious, but you know, it's the internet. So here's our arbitrary don't play with knives segment. Ungard is a fun, fanciful, swashbuckling game. That's the best word I can find for it. A fighting battle game, fencing game, parrying game. It is so satisfying to parry. All right, all right, all right. I'm getting a little too ahead of myself. So, Ungard, you need to say it with some kind of uh, panache. It's, there's an exclamation point in the title, come on. Set in a fanciful, fictional 17th century Spain, this fine painted art style, you play as Aldora de Valador. Nope, Ade Adali. What was the fucking name? Lady Adalia de Valador, as you fight through your humble Spanish town trying to defeat the evil Count Duke. More. like comedically evil, Doofenshmirtz level of evil. Thanks to an absurd law. He'll be able to declare himself absolute ruler of our city. Plus, he can lock the city gates whenever he wants, which is annoying. Along your quest, you'll bump into figures such as El Violante. Together, we will fight the Count Duke and- I apologize? Look, we know how much I butchered that mech. This is not going to be any better. Another rapier-wielding, swashbuckling vigilante that is definitely not your brother. Don't worry about it. Such a lot of big talk for someone I've never heard of, El Vigilante. The Count Duke, as previously mentioned, huge buffoon. The production of seditious art cannot go unpunished. I will not have the dignity of my office insulted by this greatest mockery. Besides, they look nothing like me. And a thieving pirate, which you are, is totally not your character's crush. Totally. Totally not. And you? Are you, I, I mean... What are you doing at this party? But where did this all start? Uh, not necessarily the game itself, but that's also a story in its own right, but... I was just browsing online, looking for games, saw Sifu, I remember a friend recommended that a long time ago, and I saw it was in a bundle on sale alongside On Guard, so I picked it up. Had a blast with On Guard. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, Sifu... Sifu's good as well, probably gonna talk about that later, but... Angard just surprised me. In the sense that, yes, it still required a lot of timing, parrying, knowing where you are on the battlefield and not getting squashed or dying multiple times in a level, but... Ooh, just so satisfying and fun. Like, the whole thing of... Uh, how to put it? It's the environment. Yes, they're gonna be... You are one duelist against all of the Count Duke's guards. Mercenaries, hired French duelists, and outnumbered fights never a fair fight. So play dirty. And the tools at your disposal is crazy acrobatics, kicking things around, knocking people over, throwing lanterns and setting them on fire, a chicken on someone's head so that they can't see. Pull a Skyrim, do it with a bucket. Just fight dirty, throw things, kick people, knock them downstairs, into water wells, into vases so it falls on their head. Weapon racks, tripping them on tables. Brasiers? Brasier? Brasier? Nope. Brazier. Brazier is the word for it. Cannons? Yep, cannons. Just run around the entire arena like mad, picking things up, tossing them in your open hand while you're holding off multiple guards with swords and jumping out of the way of a duel that was about to hit you in the back. The dodging, weaving, ducking out of combat, the parries, so good. <laughs> that, okay, I want to get that across right here, right now. The feeling of this game, the feeling, it feels good. I had a few things, a few things written as well. The title of my notes is Swashbuckling with Ladies. I mean, it's not wrong. As you head off on a swashbuckling charming romp, you end up fighting eh, quite a few different enemies. You have your lackeys, which have one health and their basic guard, which guard, think of it as a barrier you need to break, and then you can hit their health or hit point. Lackeys only have one, don't make that many attacks. You can block everything from them. There's no unparryables. They're kind of just there to fill a space and be a problem that way. You then have the soldiers, which have two hit points and when around other soldiers or lackeys or other enemies, essentially, they can then add in an unparryable attack, which you have to dodge out of the way. So with the tools out at your disposal, you have parry, dodge, your bread and butter. Well, and then, you know, actually swinging the sword. So an unparryable in orange, gotta dodge. Flash of blue, parry. 
While we're on those abilities as well, to try and get through annoying armor or a crowd of enemies to a point, you could use panache. Think of it like an ability that you build up over the course of, well, successfully parrying, dodging, hitting, you know, keeping the good score going. Then you can activate your panache meter and do a deadly strike forward, kick them off to the side, do a twirling spin, knocking everyone back. It can really help when you run into elite enemies you need to get rid of quickly. Speaking of which, heading to the next after soldier, the elite soldier. Or is it the captain? Your elite guard or elite soldier, I forget the exact terminology, has a recharging barrier stance up at the top. So essentially you can keep breaking it as normal, but under a few conditions. If you fail to parry or dodge the right attack, so if you mess up the combo when going against them, instantly recharges. Or if another elite guard is there and stops you from continuing that combo in the first place, then it instantly recharges. So with just one, make sure you have the combo down or continuously stunning them. Two, then you need to separate them, which goes back to the jump around, throw things, F around, find out. Again, it's not a fair fight. Don't play fair. You then also have the captain, which the captain has a shield, so you can't actually damage them until you get them to actually lose their stance or break stance. You can break stance on a character in a number of ways, which you don't necessarily need it for other characters, but you need it for a, a captain. Anything with that shield, which isn't much. So kick, throw items, toss them downstairs, knock down wine so they slip on it. Anything to break their, you know, guard. Then once they fall, trip over, captain will enrage, drop that shield, and every attack is unparable. <laughs> so you just have to wait for the opening to actually get a swing in. There's then also the bombardier, which, well, bomb, it's in the name. All they really do is chuck explosives across the map and then just run from you. Really irritating, <laughs> but relatively easy to take care of with any other object. You have to surprise them in some way or shock them either by doing crazy acrobatics and surprising them next to it, you know, next to them so you can then slash or just chucking things at them. Ooh, if you have any fire nearby or a lantern, if you throw it at them, their pack's gonna explode. Then we have the duelists, which are men from France, Really annoying, up their own arses, if you know. Essentially an elite guard just buffed up even further. And, you know, French. Is there an equivalent to Quebec and Lancer? When it comes to the bosses, those have their own mechanics for the appropriate fights. And outside of the, you know, story, it's short, got a few chapters, fun to actually run through on higher difficulties. Another thing as well to its comedy, its jokes, its over the top evil villain and just like, craziness. So there's the joke that the Count Duke is outlawing or taxing everything. And as they're actually explaining this, there's just more and more different like uh, illegal posters. New crimes, new fees, new fines. Don't do this, don't do this. Don't kick barrels, don't kick boxes, all things you're doing. Not to mention alongside the slight platforming elements, you can find some additional secrets and little bits of text or locations. So fun little search or scavenger hunt. But the one that got me was all the comments of the guards. Cause technically, no one dies in this. Every time you knock down a guard, you can consistently hear them still chatting and talking. You bested me, can you train me? I lost a bet. <laughs> the dialogue from downed enemies is really good. You know what? In fact, just, just play some clips. I can't wait to tell the others about this. I think they'll notice the stuff we broke. Can't we just take a vacation on this island? Is that even a real sword? It hurts a little bit. But if that's not your thing, there is also an arena mode, which every round within the arena, you get to add an additional, well, one, you get an additional debuff regardless, and then you get to pick between three different buffs that carry on through the next rounds, which ends with a boss on the final round. It's a lot of fun. Though I've talked about a lot of the details, the fact that I just had a blast with it, and that's the thing, the blast, like I... Next to Sifu, I tried this on a whim and I found, oh man, I really like this. <laughs> the timing, the dodges, the panic within the center of combat, the tossing things around, like, oh man. This was originally a student project. Not this game itself, it was, it was the student project itself called Unguard was rebuilt from the ground up Imagine this game, which was released in August. And I just want to give props. 
And with that, and our tales of Aldea de Valador, we're going to end with our patrons. Who would best me in any duel? <laughs> no, so thank you all for watching. I've got other videos on the way. Something slightly touching on this, in the sense of tabletop RPGs, but uh, we're gonna see how that goes, because that's... That's an interesting homebrew. Anywho, have a nice day. And if you're not having one, I hope you do.